hey guys welcome back to the channel today I'm going to show you guys how to bypass this guy this is the air bypass control solenoid I actually changed mine which is why mine is out of the car because I thought that was a problem if you watch my other videos you'll see what happened but I'm going to teach you guys how to bypass this today so first I'll just show you the quick steps you just got to remove the engine cover four bolts under here just to access this rail that's in here that way you can bypass it so I'm just going to undo everything you need to do here. Simple stuff. You need a 10 millimeter uh, socket opener and wrench to do that. And then I'll show you what it looks like once that's taken off. So that's your engine cover removed. You're going to be removing this bolt. This one here. This one's unnecessary. This one. And that one. So all those four are removed. Just pop this little guy right off. It'll just give you a little more access to the solenoid, which is right back here. And you could also pull this rail, this uh, wire up a little bit, give yourself a little additional room to work. And I'll explain what we're gonna be doing in a second. So now you can access everything you need to access. Mine's already done. Sunlight's coming in, so it might be a little hard to see. Hopefully not, getting a little glare. Okay, so the glare's not there anymore. So you're gonna lift this up. As you can see, I have two open hoses right there. You can see they're not in anything. That's where you're gonna be doing the bypass for this setup. So originally, you're gonna have this T right here, which is, mine's disconnected. Go into your intake manifold, which is where this hose is. This is the bypass. So this is the little guy that connects into the intake manifold. So if you want to get the correct size hose, you can just pull this guy off first, which connects to this T and go to an auto parts store. And this basically is going to be like this before you do this job into the intake manifold. And from that point, you're going to unplug it from here. This is all open. If, if you want to plug it up, you can. You could detach it from the valve. This is what the valve looks like uninstalled. So that T goes into here. If you want, you can plug this, it's up to you. you can, you're gonna be plugging, you can plug these two as well. Mine are open, it just has those two hoses running up like so. I'll show you what it looks like underneath. So that's your valve. And then I'll show you, those are the two hoses that are coming out of that valve right there. Right there where my thumb is. So these two right here, they're gonna remain open. You can, you can pull those hoses off and plug it if you wish. I've just been so busy, I haven't had time, so I'm going to leave it open for now until I have more time. It really is not going to affect anything if it goes bad. I don't care because I have another one. Also, when you're doing this, do not unplug the sensor. There is a wire in the sensor. Do not unplug it. Leave it plugged in. You're only taking the vacuum lines out. The, the harness is right here. Do not unplug that. It's very important. Leave it plugged in at all times. Also, as far as the vacuum lines concern, as long as it connects, it's good enough, it's going to work. I use this hose right here that I got from the mechanic shop next door. It's actually a little smaller. It was hard to fit because it was, you know, the hole's a little small. But as you can see, I just squeeze it on there and the car is operating perfectly. The bypass works great. So now I'm gonna show you basically what to do. I'm gonna flash up a picture real quick on what you're actually bypassing. That way you have a clear idea because I'm not gonna start taking all this apart. It's unnecessary. So I'm gonna put that picture up right now and then I'll show you what's being done. So first things first, you're gonna detach this piece here from this T. The T could remain hanging like so, it's not gonna do anything at this point. So you're just gonna detach this piece. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna get the vacuum hose that you purchased. You're gonna need about 12 inches. You're going to hook it up directly into your intake manifold right here. And I can flash that picture up for you one more time. That way you understand as we're going with the video. This hose is gonna go on the rail. It's going to be this line here where this hose is going in. It's kind of hard to see. That's why I'm gonna flash that picture up for you when I had the part removed. And as you can see, it's plugged in right there. See, there's 
there's a line right here. This is that middle rail. So intake manifold right here. This is the new vacuum line you're gonna be purchasing to this middle rail. Once you do that, that part is complete. Halfway done with the job. Then once you unplug all the, the other connectors from that piece, as you can see right in here, I'm not getting too much glare. See, this is the uh, the outer one, which is this rail right here. So I'll show you the part right here. This is the outer one. This rail, this one right here, is this middle middle rail. So this this part of the solenoid that goes into the middle rail, this gets the vacuum line on it from the intake manifold, and this one's going to get a plug. I'm not sure if you could see my plug. Maybe I can pop it off for you if it's not too tight. Oh yeah, you can see from the back side. Here we go. Okay, so now this is where you're going to be putting the vacuum plug, which is this rail, the outer rail. And you can see I plugged it up right here. So this side gets the plug, and that middle rail is going to get this vacuum line, like I said, from the intake manifold that goes all the way under here to the middle rail right there and you can see it going in it's connected right here so basically the two outer rails plug plug the outer one vacuum line the inner one and that's pretty much it and like I said if you want you can cap all this other stuff off you can remove the T over here if you would like and you can cap you can cap everything I'm gonna leave it just in case I ever decide to go back to stock. It's not really causing any issues, any problems. Like I said, I don't think it's gonna cause a problem to fail, but if it does, I do have another one, so I really don't care, and I don't feel like taking the job apart. But yeah, any size vacuum line, this is the one I used. It's smaller, but it fits. As long as the air goes through, it's gonna do its job. So that's pretty much it, um, as far as that's concerned. So now if you just want to understand what exactly it is you, you are doing, which I like to do, this middle line here, which is the one that you're running the vacuum line, you, it goes down into here. This line here goes down into the, the bypass valve, which is located straight down. Straight down there. Might be a little hard to see. Let me move this stuff out of the way. But the bypass valve is right there, a little round. Has that little round looking hat to the wire that's the bypass valve that's what you're running the vacuum line to it's just following up through the rail and that's what you're actually doing the one you're plugging outer rail goes down here this goes into the turbo compressor housing that you're blocking off so which is this outer line that travels straight down that's the the turbo compressor housing the other one is your bypass valve so that is what you're actually doing so like you could actually remove the rail if you would like you don't need it any longer but I'm just gonna leave it like I said if I want to go back to stock so guys this is how you bypass this part to get rid of your sputtering or you know the car coming in and out of boost at high rpm that's what was happening to me that problem is totally totally solved I've been driving the car like this for about two weeks now week and a half or so some, somewhere around there and I haven't had the issue since, so this did fix the problem. I replaced it, if you watched my initial video, thinking that it was bad, but you have to bypass it. My car is also running a Fearable Stage 3 tune. It also did this when I was just K-Tuner uh, Stage 2 off-the-shelf map, so I was having the issue both ways. When you have an intake in, you, you could hear it more. If you have a stock intake, you may not hear it. You might feel it, but you don't hear it as much, but the intake definitely lets you hear what's going on a lot better. So you hear the car kind of like suck in and out, like it's coming in and out of boost. Not good. So this is how it's done. Simple process. Um, I don't know if you guys are interested. Let me know in the comments below. If you want me to put some kind of kit together, I'll, I'll try to get a price together. If You know, with all the caps, that way you do it the right way. I'm gonna leave mine this way. But if you wanted to actually cap everything off, I could include all the caps for it. I can include the correct size hose, which I would get a larger size. I would match the diameter of this. Up to you guys. If I have enough interest, I'll put a, a kit together. So for the kit, I'm thinking somewhere around uh, 20 to $25, depending on what all the cost is gonna be. That'll also be including shipping. 
so that's pretty much where that'll be like i said if there's enough interest i'll put a kit together you guys contact me and i can ship them out to you or you could source your own parts it's not rocket science like i said if you just take this part off right here you could run to the auto parts store and try to get the closest match hose possible my hose is tighter so i don't even need the clamps it fits on there under plenty of tension it's just vacuum lines it's nothing crazy so if you guys have any questions leave them in the comments below thanks for watching guys and i'll see you next time Take care.